Welcome to our lecture online. So let's take another look at how to calculate the covariance. Of course, to have the covariance, we need to have two data sets. Is it possible to have covariances between more than two data sets? Yes, there is, but we'll tackle that later. We just start with two data sets. So we have the X and the Y data set. Now notice there's a little bit of a difference here. On the X data set, the numbers increase. On the Y data set, the numbers decrease. And again, to calculate the covariance, we do that to find the relationship between the two data sets. Now, if one is increasing and the other one is decreasing, hmm, that would provide a, a kind of a negative relationship. So let's see what we end up with the covariance calculation. But we have to follow these three steps, and we start out by first having to find the mean or the average of both sets. So we've already calculated this set before. We have the five numbers, we add them together, divided by five, and we get six. Now remember, we're dealing with populations here, the whole data set, not a sample. We do the same for the Y data set. We find the average, and it turns out to be seven. Now the next thing we're going to do is we find the variance of both sets. To find the variance, you take each of the numbers in the set, subtract the average from that, and then, ooh, we forgot to put something on there, and then we square, we square that difference. Okay, I forgot to put the two up there, so we need to make sure we do that. So that means that we take the first number minus the average, we square that, the second number minus the average squared, the third number minus the average squared, the fourth number minus the average squared, and the fifth number minus the average squared. Add all that together, divide by the total number of numbers. Now, we would end up with n minus 1 if we just had a sample of the whole population, but we're using the whole population, so we, use, we divide by 5, and notice 40 divided by 5, we get 8. So the variance of our first data set is 8. We do the same with the second data set, and again, since it's squared, it doesn't matter if the numbers increase or decrease, you always end up with a positive number. So the number minus the average, the number minus the average, in each case we square that difference, we end up with a total of 94 when we add them all together, divided by 5 is 18.8, so that's the variance of our second data set. Notice I use the symbol sigma to be technically correct, although we tend to interchange S and sigma. To be technically correct, we use the letter sigma to indicate we're using the entire population in the set. Then we want to find the covariance, step three. So to find the covariance of the two data sets, we take the sum of the product of the difference between the first number and the average from the first data set times the first number minus the average of the second data set. Notice, if we take 2 minus 6, we end up with a negative 4. Here we take 12 minus 7, we get a positive 5. For the second product, we take the second number, minus 6, 4 minus 6 gives us negative 2, and the second number here minus the average, 11 minus 7, which is 4, we multiply them together. 6 minus 6 gives us 0, 8 minus 7 gives us 1. 8 minus 6 gives us a positive 2, and 3 minus 7 gives us a negative 4. 10 minus 6 gives us 4, and 1 minus 7 gives us a negative 6. Multiply them all together. Notice in this case we get all negative numbers, except for the one in the middle. 0 times 1 is 0. Divide by the total number of numbers in the data sets. So we end up with, oh, another mistake here. This is negative 60. I think 24, 44, 60. Yes, negative 60 divided by 5, negative 12. So what does that mean, the covariance of negative 12? Well, first of all, since it's negative, we know that we have an increasing set and a decreasing set. So there's a big difference between how the two sets correlate to one another. Now, if we actually were to find the correlation between the two data sets, we would end up with a number between negative 1 and 1, and so we would see how strongly they correlate to one another. By just calculating the covariance, well, we have an indication, but the number 12 depends a lot upon the size of the numbers, the average, the variances, so it's not that easy. 
Yep, I was just thinking about something. But yeah, it's not that easy to get a real feel of what the negative 12 means. To do that, we need to actually find the correlation. So we take the covariance and we divide it by the square root of the variance of the one set and the variance of the other set to actually find the correlation. But that's for another video again. We'll worry about that later. At least we know that this negative indicates that one set is increasing, the other set is decreasing. The number 12 means that, yes, there's a fairly good relationship between the two in the opposite direction, but to find how closely they correlate, we still need to find the correlation coefficient. But that's for another time. Okay.